Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind the Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to talk about white toner printing and walk through the process step by step of using forever dark paper with a white toner printer. So this walks you through the process of using that paper on a white toner printer. Now a white toner printer you can use several different types of papers. I'm only going to show the steps for this one paper in this video, just so you can get an idea of how to use a white toner printer. Now I have further videos in this series. So if you don't know what white toner printing is at all, I have a video for that and I will drop a link for that in the description below this video. And then I'm using the Creo white toner printer for this video. And I do have a video on the setup and maintenance of that printer. And you can see that in the description below this video as well. This video is just gonna cover the step-by-step -step instructions of how to use a white toner printer with the specific paper that I'm using. And I will link to all the supplies I'm using in the description below this video, as well as the cute little so many books, so little time file that I am using for this project. So you can get the file for free and you can use it for white toner printing, DTF, sublimation, whatever you would like. So I will link to where to get that free file in the description below this video. So now let's take a look at step-by-step -step how do you use a white toner printer? How does it hold up in those laundry cycles? And would I recommend a white toner printer? I have the answer towards the end of this video. So let's get started. So you open up the RIP software and the first thing you wanna do is to choose your paper. As you can see, there's a wide variety of papers that you can print on the Creo white toner printer. You need to choose what you are actually printing on at this stage. So I'm gonna choose Forever Dark. And you can also choose the size. I do have the 11 by 17 size, so that's fine. This will change a lot of your settings automatically. So the good thing about this is you just pick that and it changes a lot of the things it needs to change. The next thing I'm gonna do is upload my design. So I'm gonna to go to File, then Import File. Find the file on my computer, click Open. The file will then open and you can see it over here on the side. I can zoom in and out. I can zoom out so I can see the full sheet of paper here. I can click the image itself, hover over that corner and pull it to resize. You can also resize down here under the jobs tab. So you can put in a specific size and there is a lock unlock button. So if you wanted to unlock it to change the width and height separately, you can. Now we do need to mirror this for a white toner printer. I already have mirror picked, but if it's not, you'll want to do that at this time. You can also pick this and move it around on the paper itself. So let's say I moved it towards the top. If I had some other things to print at the same time, I could add those now and put those at the bottom. Now also if you click the image, that job tab opens up and you can click color adjust. You can adjust any colors you would like here. So if you don't think your colors are bright enough, not saturated enough, you can adjust those settings here. You will see that I have it set as a photo setting. You could also change it to something like graphics. And let's cut, bump up the saturation just a little bit. So I'm bumping up the saturation just a little bit and changing it to graphics instead of photo. And I'm gonna click OK. So at this point, this looks pretty good. I can zoom in, take a closer look at the file itself if I would like. But overall, I like how that looks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect my printer. Once I have my printer connected, I can click on the job and just click the print job tab. At this point, the printer will start up and it will go ahead and print the job onto the paper that I have. So now I wanted to note, like if I had more than one thing I wanted to print, I could click the copies button if this fit two to a page. So let me just do this for an example. So for example, if I go in here and size this to five inches, then there's plenty of room on this page. I could click the copies button at this point and it's gonna make multiple copies. I could tell it how many copies I wanted and fill the entire page up. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click the job and I'm gonna remove this because that's not what I want. So now I repeated those same steps, uploaded it, changed the color on it. Now, if I needed more than one of this one, I could click duplicate. Enter the number of duplicates desired. I'm gonna make two shirts, I just need one. And I'm gonna say, okay. Now, if I zoom out, you can see I have two here. So if it's so large, like multiples won't fit on a page, you can duplicate it instead. So now everything looks fine, it's mirrored, it's ready to print. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my Creo white toner printer and click print job. I'm using Forever Dark Paper and in that box, you're gonna have three different types of sheets. The first one is a clear film. It's matte on one side 
and shiny on the other. This is what you print on and you print on the matte side. Now I sacrificed one and scratched it. So you can scratch that matte finish off with your fingernail. So if you wanna scratch one, maybe in the corner or whatever, just to prove this is the matte side. So you print on the side where you can scratch off the film. The next type of paper you'll have is just like a parchment type sheet. And you have several of these, but not like as many. So you can reuse these parchment butcher paper type sheets. And then finally you have what they're calling B Paper Pro. Now this is like the adhesive basically for your ink. Now it does say specifically on the back, do not print on this paper. So you should not get it confused. So it has the liner that is printed with these graphics and the other side will be plain white. So for now we're gonna set aside the adhesive sheet, set aside the parchment sheet, and we are going to print on the clear film using a white toner printer. On the printer itself, you'll turn it on. And then I like to use the front feed tray. Just open the tray up and then add the paper inside when it calls for it. Once you load the paper and have that gray flap shut, it should recognize it. If it doesn't, just lift that gray flap back up and close it back down and it should recognize your paper and start feeding it through. If you are confused about how to load your paper into any printer, look for a little small graphic on the printer tray, whichever side the writing is on. So in this case, it is saying that my matte side should be up because it is going to print on the side that is up. If this graphic was reversed, it would print on the opposite side. So if the little flap that was folded down had the printing on it, then that means it will print on the opposite side. Then the printer itself will print your sheet. Once you print this, it'll look a little something like this. So when it comes out, the ink toner, whatever you wanna call it, is completely dry. So yes, technically it's toner and it is completely dry. You can touch it. This side will be what you will see on your shirt. So don't worry if this side looks funny. So this side looks very white. This is what the software does. The RIP software translates your image into something that can be printed with this printer and something that will work even on that dark color garment. So that is why you see quite a bit of white here on the back. However, when you flip it to the front, you can see exactly what this image will look like. I have found that a traditional heat press is easier to use with white toner prints. You can probably get other like Auto Press or the Cricut Easy Press to work with white toner printing, but it will probably take some trial and error. When you're using your traditional heat press, you wanna be sure to remove any Teflon sheets that you have on the upper or the lower plates. One of the reasons that the Easy Press doesn't work as well is because this process needs a vertical movement. So there doesn't need to be any horizontal slide. And it is very hard to keep the Easy Press still. Also keeping both surfaces hot is a really good idea. So keeping your heat press in the closed position when it's not in use keeps that lower plate hot and ready for application. It is also recommended that the bottom pad not be extremely soft. So on something like the Cricut Auto Press or the HTV Rot Auto Press, you may opt for a firmer mat and have better results. So now you have your design printed on the A foil. You're gonna place the A foil into your heat press, print side facing up, and you're gonna place that B paper on the top of the A with the coated side facing down. So that side I was talking about that has all the words should be facing you at this point. Then you're gonna cover with that sheet of parchment paper or butcher paper. Here I'm using the sheet that came with the Forever Dark. I will note here that I cut that B paper slightly smaller than my A foil. So what this does is that prevents that B paper from transferring to your press itself because that can make that bottom pad very dirty. So then you wanna press at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 90 seconds and you want a medium pressure for this press. If you have a full scale white toner design or a CMYK design, so you added the black toner to your printer, then you might wanna increase that from 90 seconds to 120 seconds. Once that's done, you're gonna lift up that top plate and you're gonna separate the B paper from the A paper without lifting them up from that lower plate of your heat press. You wanna do this in a slow but fluid motion. Now leaving them on the plate will prevent cold air from flowing under your media. That cold air flowing under your media or moving it off will cause the transfer to cool down rapidly. 
If it cools down too fast, parts of the design may not transfer from your A foil to the B paper. You also do not want to separate this A and B media too fast. That can lead to torn out areas on the rounded edges or other critical areas in the design. The next thing you want to do is cut around your design you will see a coating frame that's caused by the bleeding of the B paper. You can see that on the A foil itself. You wanna cut around the inside of that, but not cut into your design. So hopefully I can get this where you can see it. However, you can see on this sheet where your design was. So it actually peels that adhesive off and puts it onto that toner. So just a closer look at this step, hopefully you can see how the edges just have a white line. You don't want that white line. So all you're doing is trimming around the transfer and generally you can see exactly where it sat. And you just wanna get rid of that white line in all cases. So it might be closer in some areas, further away in others, just depending on how big that B sheet was. Once you marry the A and B paper together, the transfers can be stored for several months or even longer. You just wanna protect them from dust, moisture, heat, scratches, that type of thing. So once you remove that A foil after everything is completely cool, then we can apply it to our surface. So you wanna place your shirt or whatever textile you're using into the heat press. I like to preheat that a little bit, so I'm preheating here for a few seconds. Then add your transfer on top and tape it into place with heat resistant tape. Then you're going to press. So for instance, for cotton, you want about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. You can go up to 320 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. Now all textiles are about a medium pressure. Polyester, you would turn it down a little bit. So it'd be 248 to 266 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. If you have a blend, that 248 to 266 degree Fahrenheit for 30 seconds usually works. Now when you go to things like paper, book covers, wood, nylon, there's so many different things that you can press this on. You might have to experiment a bit with the time and temperature, but for instance, the Forever Dark paper had some suggestions. So we're gonna go ahead and shut the heat press and press for the full time at the full temperature. Once it's done, you want to remove the A-foil after this is completely cool. So I kind of recommend removing it from the heat press and allowing it to cool. You can even use a DTF cooling block to cool that down. Roll back the foil and it often helps to roll it back onto itself. And again, you wanna do sort of a fluid motion across the surface. So I did wanna show you after I removed that, how you can see the design. So you can see it removed that toner as well as the coating that is on this sheet. So it removed it as I peeled that away. The next step is to repress the transfer. This can soften the touch and increase the washability, so I do recommend this step. The result before you do the T-seal sheet can be very shiny. For this step, I am using a T-seal silicone seal sheet, and I will link to it in the description below this video. So you do it 300 degrees, 20 seconds for the second press. And this kind of looks the same on both sides, but one side is gonna be a shiny white and the other side is going to be almost feel like rubber, rubberized coating. This rubberized coating goes against your design. So it will be shiny side up, rubberized coating side down in your press. So I'm adding the shirt back to the press, adding the T-seal sheet on top. Once that second press is complete, just peel back that T-seal sheet and you can peel it back hot. Then your shirt is done. There's nothing else you need to do. For care, they do recommend a cold wash cycle, no fabric softener, no liquid detergent, and do not tumble dry. So this is my design after using that T-seal. So it is much more professional looking, more of a matte finish, really gets down into the fibers. And I did another shirt just so we could have a little comparison here. So this is the shininess after that first press. See how shiny that is? And then this is the version after the second press. Now, if you liked the shiny version, you could definitely leave it like that, but the second press does embed it deeper into the fibers and will help it last longer. So I definitely recommend that second press. So here's the shirt after I've pressed it twice. Now this is before any laundry cycles. This is just after pressing twice. I took another shirt and I ran it through the laundry 10 times. So the shirt on the bottom is no laundry cycles. Shirt on the top is after 10 laundry cycles. And I must say, everything still looks really good. I even think it gets softer after laundry cycles, so the feel gets even better. You can definitely still feel it 
it is on top of the shirt. However, it is a much thinner feeling than an HDV product and I do feel it gets softer over time. So it almost wears similar to a screen print would wear. And here's that bottom just for your comparison. So this one is after pressing and this one is after 10 laundry cycles. Again, everything looks really good even after it's been laundered 10 times. Now I did follow all care instructions and I will say that they say the laundry cycles would be like up to 50 washes. So it will last a very long time on your surfaces. This is the one after it's pressed. I will say I'm not extremely impressed with the stretchability of white toner. So I'm gonna use this area as an example and this is a shirt that stretches. If I stretch it, what happens is it stretches However, you can see the lines or the ribs where it's stretching. So it just does not look good and does not stretch well on the surface. So for stretchability, I'm not wild about white toner printing. So now you've seen this one, I ran through the laundry and you can see it still looks very, very good. Even after those 10 laundry cycles, this shirt looks amazing. It looks basically just like I pressed it. I couldn't even tell really the difference besides the fact that it got softer to the touch between the one, you know, when I just pressed it. And then as I laundered it, I really couldn't tell a difference except to me it got softer. So now I'm gonna talk pros and cons of white toner printing so you can decide whether this is right for you or not. So one of the pros obviously is that you can print with white. So that makes designs as well as putting light designs on dark colors super easy. So that is where it shines and shines way above sublimation. I also love the printing process itself, super easy to print and the printer is so fast. So I did not even speed up the printing portion of this video, it really does go that quickly. So I love how quick and easy the printer is to use. The printer is easy to set up, doesn't have any maintenance and you saw how quickly those prints came out of there. Now you do need to use a rip software but I don't find that as a con. It's easy to use, easy to put everything in there. I don't find that a con at all. Now, when it comes to the pressing portion, I do think the pressing portion is a little more difficult. You do need, in my opinion, a regular heat press, like something like the Easy Press or Cricut Auto Press won't do as good of a job. So I would recommend a regular heat press for the pressing process itself. And then there are just several steps to remember. I just think there is a learning curve to the pressing process. Now, once you get used to it, it'll probably be second nature and it'll be something that you don't even think about doing. However, getting started with it, you'll need to think through the process each and every time. What are the times and temperatures for each of the individual processes? Those tips and tricks I mentioned along with the video, you will probably need to think about those and watch a video probably every single time during those first few presses that you make. After that, I do think the process will get easier but you do have that time that you will need to learn that process and perfect it, get it right. Make sure it is working for the search you're making. So for me, the pressing process is more of a con than the printing process in the case of white toner printing. And then I showed you the results after the laundry test. I do think it wears very well, which is a pro. Like I said, the shirt got even softer after the laundry cycles and the wear is just looks amazing on here. Even after the 10 laundry cycles, the shirt looks really, really great. So I was very impressed with the laundry cycles and how white toner printing held up. However, I was less impressed with this product on a shirt that stretches. So I would probably use this on a shirt where I wasn't expecting a lot of stretch. I don't think it looked great with the stretching process. It just kind of stretched apart. Yes, it did stretch, but it just stretched apart and had lines in the design after I stretched it. So it just wasn't perfect for that application. So I would stick with shirts where you're not expecting a lot of stretch across them. And then as far as the feel, it does sit on top of the shirt. That can be a con for some people. So it's not gonna feel like sublimation where sublimation embeds into the fibers. It is gonna sit on top of the shirt, similar to HTV product. However, it is very thin. You're just talking about that ink or toner layer and then your adhesive layer. So it is a very thin product. And like I said, I do think the feel got even softer after the laundry cycles. So after the laundry cycles, I would say it feels similar to a DTF print. DTF might be a little softer feel on the shirt, but overall the feel is amazing. Now I do recommend that post press, I went through the post press process. I do recommend the post press to really embed it into those shirt fibers 
and get the best feel and professional look as possible. Overall, I think this is a very professional process. You could use it to make professional shirts at home, which is kind of the point, right? So if you're going to invest in a white toner printer, more than likely you're going to be selling the shirts that you make, or you are going to be selling the prints off of that. Now, if you sell the prints, you will need to go through that marrying process and sell it with that adhesive on the back, as well as a full set of instructions for whoever you sell them to for the pressing process. Like I said, the pressing is the most tricky part of this process. So you'll wanna make sure to communicate that if you are selling prints from this printer. Once you print on that film and marry the prints together with that B part paper, then those prints last for months. As long as you keep them out of sunlight, you know, keep them away from moisture, all those type of things, they will last for months. So you can definitely sell them at that point. However, I would highly recommend, like I said, having very clear instructions of how your consumer is to press them. I think that is where the confusion might lie. They might not understand the whole pressing process and that second post press, how important that is. So you do wanna make sure that you do all of those things and communicate that effectively. Otherwise, this is a great printer and a great option for those of you looking to make shirts to sell or to sell prints that you print at home. So custom printed designs that your customers can put on their own shirts. It goes on all types of fabric as well as all colors of fabric. Now, one of the benefits of white toner printing, so I've been doing shirts with this. I'm gonna have future videos where I do other things. One of the benefits of white toner printing is that it can go on other types of substrates. So tumblers, mugs, mylar balloons, there are a ton of different applications for white toner printing. And I do plan to show you a few of those so you can get a feel for how versatile this process is. So now if you have any questions about how to use a white toner printer or any of the steps that I showed in this video, drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.